Hey, how's it going? Christopher here. Um, I started this channel in March 2010, basically seven years ago. Pretty close to seven years ago today. And I started this channel to document my RC journeys in scratch building and flying planes and my business and just all the fun that I, that the Lord up above has allowed me to have over these years. Um, I moved here to South Carolina from the, from Pennsylvania, the Philadelphia region, um, where I'd lived for a great deal of my life. I am now 42. I moved here in 2009. So that was uh, probably like in my mid-30s, I guess. 34, 35, I moved here. And RC up to that point in my life, from when I was a kid into the early 80s, you know, 83 when I really got into the hobby, all the way up to that time period was just, it was just a hobby. Up until when I moved here, it was a hobby. I just did it on the weekends when I had free time, in between tuning cars and putting you know, spending money on women and other dumb hobbies. RC was always there. And th throughout all of that was my mother. And um, I moved here all, you know, alone. Uh, the woman that I was previously with in Pennsylvania, we broke up. And the kind of plan was she may, might come down here to South Carolina with me. That didn't work out. So I moved down here alone in the summer of 2009, and I started my business here um, not long after that. And in the back of my head, I always felt like I was abandoning my mother. You know, I was always near and lived near my mom. I was always half an hour, 45 minutes from my mother, and I could always see her. Anytime she needed me, I jumped in my car, Boom, there. What do you need, Mom? Well, over these years that I've been living here in South Carolina, I, for the crisp, for the holidays, Christmas, I would travel up to see her, sometimes alone, and then, you know, uh, when I met Shannon in 2011, 2000, early 2011, I started to go up with Shannon, and my mom and John, my stepfather, her practically, uh, husband um, or a common law husband would come down and see us here in South Carolina and it was great I loved it um, my mom is a New Yorker she's Irish Catholic you know she's a thick-headed Irish woman and uh, with some other ailments in her life um, starts with an A tough problem and I helped her. I helped her lick it. In about 2008, 2000, 2007, 2008. I helped her get into detox and help clean her up. And I was very proud of that. I saved my mom. You know, I'm a mama's boy. I love her. Love her with all my heart. And uh, about six, seven months ago, my mom started telling me that she was having some bloating problems, some gas problems, some abdominal problems, <sighs> maybe, maybe eight months ago. I didn't think much of it. I just said, oh, you know, she's getting older and she's getting into her 70s. She's probably having IBS or something. And she was purposely holding, she was withholding certain things from me. And then around the holidays Shannon and I went up to see her for Christmas and I found out what was really going on and uh, she was normally my mom's about five foot four five foot five she's usually 130 pounds 140 pounds and she was maybe 95 to 100 pounds and a bulge right in her stomach and I'm thinking oh my god my mom has cancer she's dying I flipped. I freaked. I went white as a sheet and almost dropped. We were in her apartment, Shannon and I and John. 
I'm like, Mom, what's going on here? And she's like, it's my liver. I'm having, a, you know, the beginning stages of cirrhosis, you know, stage four, this, the liver starts to get hard, it gets cirrhotic, and it can't process fluid, and you start to get ascites, you start to get the liver fluid buildup. <sighs> that was a come to Jesus moment for me, man. And it was hard, you know, I talked to her, we spoke and everything, and we all, you know, Shannon is a, uh, is almost a registered nurse, she's like a, uh, it's like a CNA, and she's very knowledgeable in medical, in medical areas. So she kind of, you know, was able to explain it to me and say it's not a death sentence. People live with this. So I was like, okay. Well, I was keeping in touch. We went back home, and I was keeping in touch with her and John nonstop, nonstop. How how's mom doing? What's going on? You getting tests? You going to the doctor? You going here? Go see a liver specialist, okay? So the whole plan was she was gonna go see a liver specialist. She was gonna go see what was going on, get the liver, the levels of the liver, how functional is the liver, what's going on. Um, she was getting draining, getting drainage, and uh, one of the problems was when you have ascites, the liver, as it grows, it presses on the diaphragm and it presses on your stomach, your lungs, your heart your esophagus, everything. It causes a lot of problems. So her appetite went away and she just started to waste away. And the other problem was my mom is a thick-headed Irish woman. She's just stubborn. She doesn't want to be bothered with things. She's the kind of person like, I won't deal with the problem, it'll go away. I've been like that in my life in some cases, but I learned the hard way. You can't live like that, especially with your health. Comes down to your health, you gotta get on, you gotta grab the bull by the horns, and get on that, no matter what it is. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going in for a checkup with a general practitioner on Wednesday. Just just a basic checkup, see what's going on. Uh, also to get some antidepressants, because buckle up. Um, it's hard to say these things, man, I'm telling you. But I feel that we can talk to each other, because I love, I, I try to be honest with you guys not only with the planes, but when I feel there's something that I want to share and, and, and get out there. Well, she uh, recently, in the last few weeks, maybe about in the last month, John was like, Chris, she's wasting away. I got to get her in to see a liver specialist now. He went to see uh, a liver specialist in Lankano Hospital on the main line in, in Pennsylvania, um, in Wynwood. And unfortunately, she couldn't get out of the car and up the staircase to see this specialist. So he took her to the emergency room at Lankanau. She's there for about a week. And she was, she's claustrophobic and refused the normal uh, MRI CAT scan. They have open CAT scans. They didn't do it. So she goes home from the hospital. Home. She goes back to her apartment. Crazy. She was supposed to go to a nursing home. But she didn't want to do that. She wanted to go home. Thick-headed. Stupid. What are you doing? You're not, you don't want to go, go to the nursing home to the rehab and let him help you there. She wouldn't do that. So she goes home. Her situation doesn't get any better. She loses more weight. And then I'm talking on the phone with John. I'm like, John, get her out of there. Call an ambulance. Get her back into a hospital. So she goes from home to Mercy... Um, Mercy Hospital, um, my brain isn't working right now. Mercy Fitzgerald, and back on Monday, last Monday, they do a CAT scan MRI. And they find um, ovarian cancer. Yep, and it's spread. And I heard that on the phone, man, and I'm telling you, boy, it's hard. It's hard. You know? It's a hard thing, man, when somebody tells you your mother, you know? And be honest with you, it's the hard... If you've ever lost a parent... I lost my father at 18. He passed away. He had a massive heart attack. He was 68, and he, and he died. And it was sudden. It was... On Christmas Day, of all things, like 1993, I wake up, come downstairs, my mom and um, her then-husband 
turned to me with somber face and said, your, your father's dead. And it's like somebody walked up to me with a 45 and went, boom, right in the chest. And I just went down. And I didn't have the best relationship with my father. Didn't. I didn't. But it hurt. But I have always had a good relationship with my mother. I've always loved her with all my heart, all my soul. So it's tough. It's really rough to go through and to know what's coming. It's tough. It's the hardest thing I've ever gone through in my life. And I'm not trying to be a downer to you guys. I'm not trying to depress you. I'm not trying to make you sad. But this is, this is the lowest, hardest, darkest point of my life. I'm 42 years old, and I've been pretty blessed. I'm able to make RC airplanes for a living and have my hobby as my profession, and I'm grateful for that. And I've got great subscribers and people like you watching, and I can't thank you anymore. Even the guys that get that troll me and say mean things, hey, you guys are cool too. I, you know, hey, it's all good. It's all good. But man, I'm telling you something. I've been crying these last four days. I have cried more than I have ever cried in my life. It's tough. It's hard. And to see my mother in the state that she's in, that's real tough. That's hard. Very hard. And the point of this video, I'm finally getting to the point. You, you, you guys are like, oh, okay, Chris. Well, here we go. Here's the point, finally. The point is this. Throughout all this darkness and misery, you got, there, there, are simmer, there are shimmering signs of light that can come through and help you. Your faith in God. Your faith in God. Family and friends yourself, your own belief in yourself, the memory of your loved one, and something to keep your mind busy. For a man, that's very important. I can't stress that anymore. Whether you've gone through this, or you might be going through this, or this will happen to you, and I pray to God it doesn't. I don't want you feeling the darkness that, and the pain that I'm in. I don't want you feeling that. I don't. I pray you don't. I'm there now. But one of the things that's helping get me through all this is the fact that I can, I can take time and build planes and do these things and be able to make 737s and whatever and sit down and work and build and create because it's hope. It's hope. Even though there's no hope for my mother, I, I, I'm hoping that there is maybe somehow a miracle. I'm praying. I have faith. I have faith. But it's hard what's happening. What's going on is really tough. It's brutal. But through this brutal pain and this misery, there is RC. It's always there. It's always going to be there. The radio. The plane. The flight field. It's always there waiting for you. Whether it's scratch building, picking up a radio and an ARF, and going out to the flight field with your friends and flying. I'm going to tell you something. It's therapeutic. It's beautiful. And it helps. I have not been able to get out to the flight field yet since this has transpired. I'm very busy. Of all things, and on top of everything, I'm marrying Shannon April 15th couple of days from now, I'm marrying Shannon. This is absolutely horrifying. I'm going to very well might lose my mother. We're all going to lose someone. And then we lose ourselves. That's life. But I'm telling you something. There's hope. And there are ways to cope and scratch building is one of them, flying is one of them, 
being busy, keeping busy, keep your mind, in, keep your mind occupied, dreaming in your mind's eye about that scratch-built F-15 or that scratch-built SU-27 or that 737. Hope that that plane's going to get off the runway. Or, man, I want to buy that ARF. I want to buy that decathlon. Or I want to go buy that Edge, Edge 540. Or whatever. It's that hope and that fun of flying an RC airplane at, at your local flight field with your friends and just sitting down and flying a plane, man, that is just, even me thinking about it helps. It doesn't make it, it doesn't make my pain go away for my mother, but it makes it easier. And that's what I'm trying to tell you right now. If you want to find a true reason to get into RC flight and maybe scratch building, is it helps you fight pain. It does. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm telling you what's happening to me right now. This is my darkest hour. But I'm going to get through this. I'm going to. I'm going to get through this. I'm going to be with my mother to the end. But I'm not giving up. And everything that I do, I've got customer built, man. I've got planes that people pay me money for to finish. So I can't give up. I can't stop. And the fact that me having this outlet is a godsend. I'm lucky I have this. <laughs> so if you're going through pain and you're going through hard things, make sure you have family and friends. Make sure you have a belief in something. And get yourself a hobby. Get yourself something to get your mind moving. And so then you see goals in your mind eye, mind's eye of an airplane flying, a finished P-51 Mustang or, you know, uh, Mitsubishi Zero, something beautiful, finished and flying over your head. That's what I'm doing. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up on my mother. I know I'll be there to the end, and uh, I'll be here to the end, to the last day, last days on my earth, on this earth. I will be scratch building. If it's ten years from now, twenty years from now, maybe YouTube won't even be around anymore. But I'm telling you flat out. I will be scratch building planes and flying RC airplanes to the day I drop dead. Never giving up. And I'm not going to give up on my mother. And I won't give up on you guys. I'll never, I mean, I'm always here. Always here to help, answer questions, be friendly. You know, you're friendly to me, I'm friendly to you. So please wish me well. Say a prayer for my mother. It's important. But uh, just don't give up in life. Don't give up. I've always said that. Just never give up. Don't give up on your planes. Don't give up on your family. Don't give up on yourself. All right? So hopefully uh, I'm going to have some maiden flights coming up soon. I got an Aer Lingus Shorts 330 sitting right over there, getting ready to uh, maiden soon, I hope. I would love to have it at Joe Nall, and I've got... A bunch of 737s, a 200, two 200 models, a 300, and a Max 7 coming along. Here are the fuselage. There's the three of them right now. <laughs> I see these, man. Fills my heart with joy. No matter how, how much darkness there is. When I see planes that are coming along, or I watch other great builders like uh, Rami or Nefwafa or W747 or Beppe or uh, E-Productions, or my friend uh, Tokusan in Japan, or Tom Tom in, in, in Nihon. When I see all these great guys, man, it fills my heart with joy. And I love watching their stuff and watching your builds, so keep it coming. So this is Demon Driver. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for spending a little bit of time with me for a serious, very serious conversation. Um, I care very much about you guys. Thank you for spending some time. And God bless. Take care. Happy flying. Bye-bye.